So to answer once and for all the question of which NLP book is the best, which one am I supposed to start with, or which one should I read if I am already an advanced NLP practitioner, I am going to give you in this video the complete list of the 33 books I have read on NLP over the last uh, 7 years, and I am going to give you, because my opinion is super important, I'm going to give you my personal grade to all of those books, uh, an audition out of 10, to tell you what I think of all of them. Of course, those grades are very subjective because they are linked to the situation I was into uh, when I read that specific book. So maybe a book I have read uh, at the end after five years was kind of shit to me, but it would have been a great book for a beginner. It was just because I have been reading it after five years of experience, therefore the concepts described in it were not really relevant to me anymore. So just do what you want with it. You have the list in the description and I am going to give you in this video right now my my opinion on all those books. Uh, so the first one was Introducing NLP back in 2013 when I started this stuff. It was Introducing NLP by uh, Joseph Same Joseph O'Connor and uh, something Seymour, some, somebody, whatever. And I would say this was a great introduction to me, to the from into the field. It was it has been actually the book that has been triggering the passion inside me that has been um, motivating me to read all the all the other books. So it was a great book for me. I would say it was kind of a little bit too technical, uh, too dry and technical slightly because most of the books, most most of that book, I could not understand what they were talking about. It was very motivating and really um, interesting, fascinating to me but I could only grasp a few of the concepts back in the day. Now, when I read that book, uh, I understand everything. I think it is a great book. Back in the day, I could not understand everything, but it was enough to trigger the passion inside me. So I would give to that book the grade of 8 out of 10. My subjective grade, 8 out of 10. The second one was The Awesome, The Great, The Fabulous, The, the, the Super Impressive, Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins. I have been reading that one a little bit a few months later and it was, I would say, eyes opening to me because contrary to introducing an LP, Unlimited Power was really simplified. It was really accessible to a complete beginner because he had uh, Tony Robbins had removed most uh, most of the technical terms and uh, technical concepts and just reduced all the models to very few, very few components that everybody can apply right away. So I started to apply the whole submodality stuff uh, described in it and I started to be able to shift my emotions, to shift my internal states. So it was mind-blowing to me and I didn't, I, I had to read it uh, over and over again because there was so much in it that I couldn't grasp everything at first, but it was um, probably one of the greatest books I have read on NLP even today. So I would give to that one the grade of 10 out of 10. By far, really one of the best ones to me. Number three, Get the Life You Want by Richard Bandler. Uh, this one is also about, majorly about some modalities and how you can shift your internal states. I would say it was a great one for me too. Maybe, maybe more because I like Richard Bandler, even just the character, no matter what he does, I like it. So. Maybe it is not really objective about what is actually in the book, but I think it is a great book too, especially if you're a beginner, to understand on the personal development side, because this book will not teach you anything about the persuasion aspect or the covert hypnosis aspect of NLP, but it will teach you a big about the whole uh, personal development, personal empowerment, how can you be more confident, more uh, happier in your life. I think it is one of the best for this. So for Get the Life You Want, I'm going to give the grade of 9 out of 10. I think it is a great one and really definitely one of those you have to start with if you're a beginner. Number 4, Frogs in Two Princes. Uh, probably one of the most famous books in NLP, written by uh, John Grinder and Richard Bandler, when, back when they were still together, <laughs> collaborative. It was, I think, one of the most famous back in the day, of, especially because it was a great introduction to the whole field of psychology, telling all the other psychologists in the world, hey, you see what we can do? I think it was the reason why it was such a success back in the day, because it was far from being the first book they wrote, but it was the first one, if I, my, my memory is correct, it was the first one that was really a breakthrough um, in the world of psychology to let people understand that actually this stuff, this stuff works and it can be used also by psychotherapists and, uh, and psychologists. So it was um, a good one to me. But I would say, this, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give a really good grade to this one because 
I read it when I was myself studying psychology in college. I was uh, after like maybe two years of studying psychology and compared to all the bullshit concepts and the highly theoretical theories theoretical theories I was studying in college, uh, this book was really practical and it was really uh, allowing me to understand how the human mind works in a, much better, in a much better way and in a much more applicable way. So I would say it was a great book for me, but I would not necessarily say that today, with all the other material out there, I wouldn't say it is, a be it is a gra the greatest book today. So I would give 5 out of 10. It is still a good, great book to me, but I don't think it is a great book if you don't have a psychology background like I did. I'm not sure it is the greatest one if, you, if, you just, if you're just a beginner or if you just want some, a few tools to use by yourself or with your clients uh, with NLP. I would say there are way better books than this one. Number five was Ultimate Confidence with NLP by Kent Sayer. Um, I really like this one. It was still in the personal empowerment and personal development uh, topic. So once again, this one is not really about the whole covert hypnosis and how to hypnotize people uh, side of NLP. It is much more about the personal self-confidence and personal empowerment that you can use with you on yourself on an everyday basis. I really got a a few great tools, more than a few great tools from that book, because I like Unlimited Power, it was applied NLP. It was how can you use NLP in your real life, not just, uh, not just uh, detailing math concepts or just um, de design for a psychologist. It was really how can you apply NLP in your everyday life, no matter who you are, no matter what you do. So I think it was a great one for, uh, once again, as an introduction to the field of personal development with NLP. I think it is a great one. So I'm going to give the grade of 7 out of 10 for this one. But a, very, but a really good 7. A pretty good 7. Number six was Beliefs by Robert Diltz. Uh, it is talking about beliefs then, but it is talking about beliefs much more in the context of health, uh, health-related topics, like when you're a physicist, when you want to cure cancer or a really uh, bad disease. It is much more centered on that aspect of how can you use NLP to enhance human beings. It is really much more centered of bad, really uh, strong disease and, um, and health-related purpose. So for me, it was a great one also because it, uh, it explains the whole methodology to uncover beliefs, uh, belief structures. So it was a great one for me. Uh, however, I would only recommend it if you are indeed a physicist or a psychologist or a professional healer of some sort. Otherwise, I would not really recommend that one because it would be like a lot of the, a lot of the examples would not really be relevant, I think, to you if you're not already uh, working with clients like this. So for this one, I will give the grade of 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. But more for health purposes than for personal development purposes. Number 8. Transformation. There are actually two versions of transformation by Bandler and Grinder. Uh, I'm talking about the initial version back that, that was out back in the 70s or 80s maybe. Uh, because there has been another version of transformations by Bandler alone that, uh, that went out a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago or I don't remember. I'm talking about the first version, the first one. It is definitely one of my favorites, definitely, because it is the first book that really told me what hypnosis, what the hell hypnosis is, because there are so many misconceptions about what it is, but what the hypnotic trance is, what can you do through a hypnotic trance, how can you hypnotize people. There are so many misconceptions, and I, I have been a victim to some level too, some extent of, of all those misconceptions because I thought hypnosis was something uh, like magic that you could do anything with everything with hypnosis that you just just have to do this and people will start to obey you or to uh, change the limitation right away. Actually no, it's not that simple. There are some distinctions to make <laughs> whenever, whenever you work with a client on how exactly do you use it and what do you use it with. So transformations to me was the best to explain me, to teach me once uh, the first for the first time what hypnosis and the hypnotic trance is and what you can do with it. So for this one, by really, really, really far, I'm going to give the grade of 10 out of 10, maybe even 13 out of 10. I really, it's really one of my favorites by far. Number nine was Monsters and Magical Sticks by Stephen Heller. It almost sounds like Stephen Heller. Would be a good uh, wordplay. So it was uh, the number nine. I like this one too. Um, I'm not going to give a good grade to this one, neither 
Uh, same thing with uh, Frogs into Princess because I think it is really, really centered on, on people who already have some sort of background in psychology. At least I don't think you can have the full, uh, the full benefit of this book if you don't have any sort of background in traditional psychology. Because I was studying psychology when I read that book and it was once again a good explanation of what the hypnotic trance is. I think it is one of the best books to explain what the hypnotic trance is and uh, what can you do with it and how does it manifest itself in your everyday life or when you talk with people. It is really a good understanding of the hypnotic trance and some concepts about to, 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 figure, to figure out much better what it is and how you can use it in your everyday life with your clients or with yourself. So I'm going to give only 5 out of 10 to this one but it's only because I think it's, it's really specific for people who already have some background in psychology or in other uh, mind approach. Otherwise, I'm not sure you, you would have such a great uh, benefit by reading that book. Number 10 is actually not one book, but a series of ebooks. So I'm just putting everything as one big book. It was all the ebooks that I could find by Russ Jeffries, the father of speed seduction, how to use hypnotic language and stuff like this uh, in the context of dating and attraction. And I have been reading a lot of this uh, and a lot from him. Also because it was the first time I could find a, a, a legitimate source on how the hypnotic language and the Milton model are used in a conversation. Not, a, not, not on a script, but in a conversation. It was the first, um, the first examples I could find on this. I found it was really, really informative and educational. So I'm going to give the, the grade 8 out of 10 for this one. So not all of his ebooks are, are good, I think. Just a few of them are good. But at least the ones I have been reading were really, really good and really helped me to figure out an, um, conversational hypnosis in a much more, in a much, in a really more simplified way. It was easier for me to learn it from that source than to learn it from a traditional uh, covered hyp um, Ericksonian uh, hypnotherapy book, for example. Number 11 is The Insider's Guide to Submodalities by Richard Bandler. One of my favorite, once again, on the whole personal empowerment and how to use submodalities. So now that, now that I do this video, I realize it was really a topic. Uh, that mattered to me back in the day because unlimited power this one uh, get the life you want it is it is like it is like basically get the life you want but insider's guide to some modalities contains maybe even more and more educational exercises to handle your own submodalities to figure out your own emotional states, how to recognize your own states and how to get out of your own stuck states. Because most of the time when people think uh, I'm hopeless, I cannot do anything more, it is because they are into a stuck state at this moment. So the problem is that you usually don't think about using some NLP tool on yourself when you're in a stuck state because you're in a stuck state and you don't think you can actually do something for uh, with it. This book was teaching me how to get out of this. It was teaching me how to recognize, figure out, rec recognize when I was having some uh, desperate or angry or whatever state in myself and act upon it to change it with some modalities. I had been doing all the exercises with a friend of mine and we really, we really made a lot of improvements both of us by working on, our, on each other with all those tools. It was really a great thing for me. So I'm going to give to this one and once again, the grade of 10 out of 10. I'm pretty generous. Uh, 10 out of 10 because I really liked it. Um, because it was the topic that really mattered to me of, of how to handle your own emotional states, the whole emotional freedom concept. It's really what mattered to me back in the day when I started to learn NLP. Therefore, this one, since it is really on this topic, was one of the best for me. So 10 out of 10 for Insider's Guide to Submodalities. Number 12, The Structure of Magic. <sighs> Yeah, so the structure of magic. Well, so to put it back in the context, it was back when Bandler was in college and he was uh, passing his master's degree. So this book was initially the document he had produced to get his master's degree. So it was really aimed at psychologists. Once again, it was really aimed at people who have been studying psychology for their whole life or linguistics. Therefore, it is not really a book for the for the beginner who just started with NLP. And when I when I saw uh, Richard Bandler in a seminar in London a few years ago, he even told us. Well, <laughs> he even told us basically, when you want to learn something, something don't start by when the don't start by when the teacher was trying to figure out all that stuff. So he was talking about him writing the structure of magic, saying that it was just an attempt 
to figure out linguistics and to figure out how the mind can change with words. It was an attempt back in the day. So I, I kind of liked some parts of the book, but I would say it is, it is so complex and so, uh, so targeted for advanced linguists that I wouldn't at all recommend this one for an NLP practitioner. Uh, not at all, because there are way uh, there are a lot of books that have been written later, or even just on the internet, that can teach you the meta model, which is the topic of the book, that can teach you the meta model in a much more um, educational way. This one is really for linguists and uh, for people who like to always theorize about concepts. I kind of liked it, but I would really not recommend it. It was really, I think there are way better books by now. So I would only give the grade of three out of 10 for The Structure of Magic. Number 13, Reframing by Bandler and Grinder. Once again, back when they were still together. Reframing, I think it was a good one. I think it was a pretty good one. It was detailing the whole methodology of how can you take one fact, one behavior, one problematic behavior and change the meaning it has so that it won't, it won't be a problem anymore. When you have somebody who has tried to commit suicide, you can reframe what he did, what happened, so that the person will not feel drained anymore by it or will not feel depressed anymore. There is a whole methodology about this. Uh, that is also the concept of the six-step reframing that they have uh, built back in the day because hypnosis was uh, illegal in California when they have been uh, launching that stuff. So they have created a six-step reframing to give therapists, a psychologist, a process they could use that was using exactly the same process uh, than, than hypnosis, than a fractionation with hypnosis. You get people in trance and out of trance. But it was doing that conversationally with the six-step reframing. So it was an attempt to help psych other psychologists to use the, the power of hypnosis without actually hypnotizing people. Um, it may not be the most the easiest to understand book about NLP, but I thought it was a good one. So, and I could grasp a lot of good, great concepts. Like, for example, if you don't, if you want to reframe the term hypnosis because it has some, uh, it causes some problems, some trouble to the person in front of you because people are scared of hypnosis and don't know what it is. You can show. Oh no, it was the subconscious, the subconscious mind. If you want to reframe the term subconscious mind, you can just say, you know, your habits. When you have some intuitive habits. And intuitive habits is just a really fine term to define your subconscious mind. So it is a whole book, a book about the whole methodology of redefining your words, your terms, so that you can caress the, the mind of the person without breaking, without forcing anything against it. I think it is a good book, so I would give um, 7 out of 10 for this one. 7 out of 10 for reframing. Number 14, Persuasion Engineering by Richard Bandler and John Laval. Uh, I would say it is a good one. Even if it is a tricky one, it is tricky to give, a, um, to give a, an opinion on this one because as everything that is written by Bandler, especially at this time because he was like, he had already uh, tr like 20 years of NLP behind him at this time when he wrote that one. So all, his, all the book is filled with nasty loops, with complex uh, uh, loops that, yeah, that, that link together, but maybe he's starting a loop at the beginning of the book that he, that he only closes at the end of the book. and. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't spend the whole time to figure out everything that he does in that book, but basically, yeah, there there is a lot of stuff that is not con that is not aimed at your conscious mind in that book. So it is kind of tricky to give a grade to this one because you would need to actually practice all the stuff they are talking about and measure the progress so you could know. But I would say it is still a good book also because there was a lot of things you can consciously understand. Things like uh, small tricks, some some small stuff you can apply right away if you're if you're in sales. Because actually it is really much more about sales people than about um, uh, therapists, so it is only for sales and persuasion. But it is a good one, I would say 8 out of 10 for this one. 8 out of 10 for persuasion engineering. Number 15, how to hypnotize anyone secretly. I'm not even sure it is a physical book, I think it is just an ebook sold on the internet. Um, I'm going to be really really harsh with this one because... <laughs> Nothing. Uh, well, basically, maybe it is also because I had already been reading a lot previously before reading that one. But this one, I would say it is just a compilation of all the Google, the Google articles about NLP piled together with some, con with some content section and whoosh, it's a book. 
That's really what the what feeling I got by reading it. I thought it was really just the same content rehearsed that you can read on every possible Google, Google article without even giving some opinion or some uh, examples from his life. At least from what I remember, maybe there was a few examples, but I think it was really, really just rehearsed, just the same st stuff rehearsed again and again about the meta model and the Milton model. It was just basically this. So pff, I really don't recommend that one, not at all. I would give two out of 10. The subjective once again, so maybe you like this book, fine. Just two out of 10 for, in my opinion. Number 16, unlimited selling power. I think it was uh, back in the 80s or early 90s maybe that it came out. It was a book about sales, essentially about sales. So don't read, I, I wouldn't recommend to read that one if you just want to use that in coaching and therapy. I'm not sure it is the best one for this. Uh, it is really for sales. I would say it is almost the Bible, in my opinion, for NLP in sales, almost, because it is really giving you the whole sales process. Um, well, it is one of the Bibles. There is another one that I would give, I would give uh, later, but it is really a great one for NLP in sales, giving you a complete methodology with the whole pacing and leading, how to create metaphors on the spot, but from the perspective of somebody who has been using that stuff in sales for years. All the examples he's giving, I think it is impossible to come up with so many examples if he hasn't been exposed, if the author hasn't been exposed to sales or hasn't been exposed to people who are in sales. So I think it is a great one if you're in sales and want to increase your, your um, like a door knocking ability or well I mean uh, your persuasion when you are doing door knocking or cold calling I think it is a good one for this or any kind of sales meeting you have I think it is a great book for this so I would give a very good 7 out of 10 almost 8 maybe 7.5 out of 10 for this one number 17 the scary and shady October man sequence by an obscure character known by the nickname Intense uh, it seems like his real name was Chris something, Chris, we don't know what. He was uh, a very a very famous character in the seduction pickup community back when uh, the, the game came out. And the October Man sequence was like the very infamous technique, uh, very myth, uh, like a myth of the seduction community. And well, I read that book. Uh, I kind of got got caught in that fascination of oh wow is it, is it really that powerful can he can he do all the stuff he's detailing in the book so I read that book and I found it was really interesting his perspective on how to use covert hypnosis is really interesting however it is also very very manipulative uh, not the whole book but some part of, some section of the book is really terribly manipulative and um, is, I think it is much more technique reserved for cult leaders who want to abuse their, their students. It is really, one section of the book is really much more on this. Another section of the book, the whole part about symbolic morphology, how you can use a symbol, create a, a metaphorically a symbol in the head of your subject and, and uh, change the symbol to change an emotion. I have been using that process, that technique in the therapy a lot of times, it works beautifully uh, well. However, the whole part about yeah, the, what I what I call the cult cult leader part, uh, I, I would really recommend to stay as far away as possible from this. Therefore, exceptionally, I'm not going to give a grade to this one because I think it is only for educational purpose and not really to be applied. So, no grades for this one. But it was really really intriguing. It was really an interesting read to me, and uh, I would recommend that one just to uh, see other perspective on perspectives on how covert hypnosis can be used in a conversation or in a day-to-day -day basis. Number 18, uh, The Sexual Key by G. D. Fuentes. I'm not sure either it is a there is a physical copy of this one, I think it is only an ebook on the internet. Um, it is also coming from the whole speed seduction uh, arena uh, that Ralph Jeffries came up with. The Sexual Key was, I think, for me, the best ever book on to find examples of scripts using the Milton model and Emily commands. It is a book filled with examples of scripts that you can use to, amp to create and amplify an emotional state in somebody. I had made a kind of a breakdown of the book by, by breaking down all the nominalizations, uh, uh, unspecified verbs, adjectives and adverbs in the book, and, um, and sensory-based uh, terminology and language. And I was, I was training myself to make a uh, mix of the, all, of, all of those one um, all of those together to train myself to come up with creative ways of using uh, the Milton model and how to fire embedded comments on the spot right away. It was really a good read to me to me. 
even if you don't want to use the, that stuff in the whole seduction arena, you can still uh, take all the concepts he's talking about and apply them to therapy, which is what I have been doing with all the stuff I learned in the in the seduction, covert hypnosis for seduction arena. I have been applying all of that in therapy too, uh, for therapeutic purposes and helping somebody and it works great. So I really like this one. However, it is, uh, it is only about Milton model types of scripts uh, not, a, not about anything else, it doesn't cover the whole rapport thing, pacing and leading, or very few of it. So I would, I would give only 6 out of 10 to this one, but it was really a good one. It's just because it was, I would say, on an NLP perspective, it is kind of incomplete, in my opinion. However, it is a, really a good one, I think, so 6 out of 10 for this one. Number 19, The Archives by Intense, again, the guy who wrote The October Man. Archives was basically the, uh, another ebook he put out on the internet that was just a compilation of all the posts he had been, all the stuff he had been posting on the mystery forum back in the day, back when the game, uh, when all the guys in the game was, were um, doing all their stuff in Hollywood. It was all the posts he had been making over the years and he compiled them all together and made an ebook out of it. It is, I would say, my favorite ever book about covert hypnosis because it gives so many examples of how he was using that stuff uh, with the women he was uh, encountering in a dating context. But it, it is so filled with, with breakthrough, with insights, with how to use that technique here, that technique there, and how he was changing all the techniques and creating his own techniques. So for me, it was probably the best ever book on covert hypnosis. However, it is really far from being a beginner's book, really far. I was already at almost four, four or five years of experience, I think four years uh, when I read that one. Therefore, I, I already had a lot of background. I already had uh, loads of uh, clients in therapy. Uh, I already had loads of experience already uh, with using NLP in conversations with friends, even with colleagues, with tons of people. So I already had a very, very solid background on NLP before I, I uh, came across that book. Therefore, I think it was the reason why I really enjoyed it so much. However, if, if you're just a beginner, I would say it is so complex that really start by something simpler because this is not a one a book for you. But So my subjective grade is going to be 10 out of 10 for this one, but 10 out of 10 only if you already have a serious background. If you're a beginner, Zero out of ten, by far. <laughs> Number 20, Secrets to Create Chemistry by Bart Daggett. Uh, the last one I read on the whole uh, speed seduction stuff. I would say this one was kind of okay. Uh, well, I, it was kind of a smaller version of introducing NLP because it is the same kind of book. It is explaining all the major concepts in, in NLP. Um, but what I really liked with this one is that there were there was actual exercises. Exercises to figure to train using all the different tools. So and, and having exercises in NLP is an absolute requisite to me personally. If you just read a book on NLP but you don't have any kind of exercises given with it, don't even bother. Because in my opinion, you are, you are only going to really uh, master NLP when you start to practice it. So a book that is giving you lots of, lots of exercises is a great book to me. A book that doesn't give you any kind of exercises, just gives you theories, you're not going to get much out of it unless you already have been practicing with, uh, with NLP uh, in some other way. So I would give 7 out of 10 to this one. I'm 7 out of 10 for itself, but I wouldn't really say it is necessary. Uh, for this kind of book, uh, if you just read Introducing an LP, I think it is covering a lot, all, all of that and even more. So I wouldn't really recommend that one. I think it is a, an okay one, but I wouldn't recommend it. Number 21, Mind Control Language Patterns by Dantelian Jones. So I know he had other, wor uh, other names uh, attached to his character. But it was one of his pen names, if I understand. And uh, Mind Control Language Patterns, I would say it is a, a great one on covert hypnosis and all the different uh, techniques to use covert hypnosis uh, in, um, in, a, in your day-to-day -day basis. I would say it is a good one because it just gives you all the different techniques and giving a name to all of them to remember them more easily but without, without, giving, without spending too much time on the theory. So I would say if you just want, if you're like a coach, for example, and just want a few, a few tools uh, to be used right away with your clients, I would say you can get into that book pretty easily and pretty fast. It will give you some tools really rapidly that you can use uh, without, without, even without understanding the whole theory behind NLP. 
So I would give a very good 7 for this one, almost 8. I would say, yeah, a borderline 8 out of 10 for this one. Number 22, Covert Persuasion by Kevin Hogan. <sighs> no good at all for me. Uh, and I'm sorry to, to criticize this one because I think Kevin Hogan is a great guy. I think he's really doing great stuff. However, I really didn't like that book and I think it is really very subjective because I had been, at this point, I had been reading so much and uh, watching so many courses and talking about it with so many people that at this point, the whole covert hypnosis stuff, well, this book to me was just the, the exact same stuff uh, repeated over and over and over again. So I really didn't enjoy that one at, at all. However, it would have to, you would have to get the, the, the opinion of somebody who, who is a beginner who has been reading that one to get a really good uh, opinion on this, uh, insight on this one, because I guess my opinion is really too subjective and too, way too much based on the fact that I had been reading too much of those books before. So I'm only going to give 3 out of 10 to this one, but it's you. I would, I would advise to go check on Amazon uh, the opinions of other people, the testimonials to make an idea for yourself uh, would it be a good book for you or not. Number 23, The Persuasion Skills Black Book by Rintu Basu. One of the best, in my opinion, by really far one of the best because once again, it is this one I think is really the bible of NLP in sales uh, aside with uh, unlimited, unlimited selling power. I would say Persuasion Skills Black Book is even higher because I think it is even more comprehensive. I think Rintu Basu is an awesome teacher, he's an incredible trainer, and I think he is really an even better trainer, uh, at least from what I can see in that book. Uh, to me, it is, he is even a better trainer than Donald, uh, than Donald, the guy who wrote the other book, uh, Selling Power. So I would really give a g really high grade to this one. I would give 9 out of 10 for Persuasion Skills Black Book because it gives so many techniques but it gives them in a, in a really uh, educational way without confusing you with so many theories and uh, added techniques. It really removes as much as possible to only give you stuff you can apply right away in sales. Only in sales. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise this book for therapy and coaching but for sales is really really a great one. So 9 out of 10 for Persuasion Skills Black Book. Number 24, Modeling with NLP by Robert Diltz. And now we're getting, even for the, the Forager books, we are getting much more into the whole Robert Diltz stuff that I have only started to read at, at that time. So, modeling, I would say it is filled with good examples with much more advanced concepts in NLP and getting, of course, NLP back to its roots with modeling because initially it was about modeling uh, successful behaviors. So I would say Modeling by Robert Dills is a good book, but first of all, it is really aimed, in my opinion, to add NLP nerds like me, definitely. It's really aimed at nerds because there are so many technical concepts that unless you're really, you're really geeky with all this stuff and like to uh, to find new names for new concepts and, and figuring out new models for yourself, if you're not that type, that type of person, if you just want a few tools in NLP that you can use right away, stay away from modeling, from this book on modeling because I think it is way too technical. So I would give 6 out of 10 to this one because there was a lot of great stuff in it, but I think it is really too confusing for a beginner and too many too many theoretical concepts. So I would only give 6 out of 10, uh, but it is a good read if you're a nerd with an LP. Number 25, on the other side, still on modeling, but on the other side, uh, which means a book that I really recommend on modeling, Deep Trans Identification by Sean Carson. To me, one of the best books on NLP and, uh, and hypnosis, hypnotherapy, I think it is really one of the best. It is the, the actual book in which I have been learning modeling, or most of what I know about modeling and how do I apply modeling is coming from uh, that book. Really, it's one of the best for me, so I'm going to give the maximum notes for this one, the maximum grade for this one. 10 out of 10 for Deep Trans Identification. Really, really by far one of the best, giving you a lot of the roots of how you can use hypnosis to do modeling on, on some genius shit that you encounter, even if you only have video access to the genius. I have even built a whole uh, program on modeling and it's really based on that book. Really, really for me, one of the best. Number 26, Words That Change Minds by Shelley Charvet. Uh, it is about metaprograms and I've got a kind of a problem with this because I find metaprograms are extremely boring. 
really subjective. And I just think it is really super boring personally. So I, I barely use two or three, maybe even just one or two uh, meta programs recognition when I am interacting with people. So, I, well, maybe it is because I already had acquired so many tools before that. But I really don't, I really, I really find meta programs quite boring when I communicate with people to elicit them. I'm like, pfft. so I, I would say I'm not a big fan of this, but, but if you, if you are interested in meta programs, it is the only book I would recommend. I have been skimming through other ones on the same topic, and this is the only one I would recommend if you like meta programs. So I would give only six out of 10 for this one because I don't like meta programs, even five out of 10 even 5 out of 10 because I don't like meta programs, but if you enjoy it, it is by far the best book you can find on the topic. Number 27, Slide of Mouth by Robert Diltz. So, huge topic, Slide of Mouth is a really huge topic and this book is even a bigger topic. The thing is, um, Robert Diltz had been modeling, has been, had been attempting to model on Richard Bandler how Bandler could always reframe everything people said uh, conversationally. Uh, so how basically Bandler could use conversational hypnosis in his own way without always injecting humor or uh, breaking people's statements before they could, before they could even uh, interact more with him. So it was the model of all of this and in itself, I think it is a great idea. However, the book is filled with so many different other techniques uh, related to NLP and especially related to what Robert Diltz has been doing with, with NLP. So it is kind of the tricky thing with, with Robert Diltz in my opinion. It is that it is never books about NLP. It is books about what Robert Diltz has been doing with NLP. So it is kind of a completely separate category in my opinion. However, it is one of the best books I ever read, so I would give 10 out of 10 by far to this one, maybe even 15 out of 10, because it covers so many different things about how can you advance the human creativity, the human mind to new levels of thinking, also because he had been studying geniuses for a long time. So I would give 10 out of 10, but it, I could only grasp all the beauty of that book and all the, all the, the fascinating concepts of that book because I had five years of experience behind me at that point. If you don't have years of experience, I think you would just grasp very little, uh, very few concepts from that book compared to everything that is in it. There are so many different things in it, uh, things about perceptual positions, things about submodalities, it is covering so many different topics. I really think you already need some background to understand fully what is inside this book. Otherwise, you would just barely skim through it and just slightly understand some of the concepts, but not really get the whole value of that book. So 10 out of 10 by far from me for this one, but only to be read after you have been gathering some experience already. Number 28, The User's Guide to Slide of Mouth by Doug O'Brien, which has been attempting to uh, simplify and reduce the, the previous book by Robert Dills. I think he has been doing a great job. Um, I guess Slide of Mouth can even, even more be simplified and, only, and you can actually remove a lot of the, the side of mouth patterns to only keep the ones that are really uh, an obligation to use reframing because some of them are like optional. However, I think if you're just new to the side of mouth topic, I think it is the best one to start with because it is um, the, more, the most educational I could find on the topic. So I would give eight out of 10 to this one because really educational and it was a good attempt at simplifying all the complex NLP terminologies and giving a few actionable steps you can use right away when you want to use um, conversational change to help clients in your daily practice. Number 29, The Complete Series of Strategies of Geniuses by Robert Dill. So it is, it is three different books or nine different books? No, it was three different books covering different geniuses like Leo da Vinci, Einstein, all these kind of geniuses that, that Robert Dills has been modeling by their by their writings, uh, what, what, what documents we have been finding from them. So there was Tesla, there was Einstein, there was Da Vinci, there was Mozart, uh, other guys like this. And he has been studying all this and uh, producing a whole complete uh, book th series about it. I would say, as I, men as I mentioned uh, for the Slide of Mouth book, to me it is not really an L well. It is an LP in the sense that he's modeling them and he's uh, creating models to figure out what they were doing. But I would say it is really, once again, what Robert Dills has been doing with NLP. So I would say it is fascinating in itself. However, I would put that in a completely different category. I would say it is not NLP books, it is 
deals book. It is a rubber deals book. It is a completely different category. So I'm not going to give a grade to this one because I don't think it is, it is belonging to the NLP category. It is really a completely different subject. Number 30, The Wild Days of NLP. It is a very small book. I think it is like uh, 100 pages or let me just check that. It is just yeah, 133 pages. It is just a small book. Um, I have been reading that one because I wanted to figure out much more about the, the, base, uh, the foundations, how it all started. And this book is one of the only ones you can find where they actually tell you about what happened back in the day, what was what was happening in the beginning, uh, how it all started. So it was really great for um, informative purpose if you want to figure out how NLP started and how it was created. However, you're not going to, understand, to learn that much about NLP techniques or hypnosis techniques. Not, not at all. So I would give only 4 out of 10 because it isn't. it was really entertaining to me to read about uh, how Bender was in the beginning uh, and what happened back in the day, how it all started. However, it was not teaching anything about techniques, so I would give you yeah, a 4 out of 10 uh, under the angle of which books can be teaching you the most about NLP, about NLP techniques. Number 31, NLP Volume 1 by Robert Diltz, The Study, and Stru the study of the Structure of Subjective Experience. <gasps> Zero, 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 like even down in the earth, you just dig a hole and you, poof, you put inside and you don't think about this one anymore. It was like when Bendler, when Bendler said the structure of magic was their attempt to figure out linguistics back in the day, so don't start by, by this one because it was an early attempt uh, and by now they have a much better understanding of it. I think this one is the same. It was a, an attempt from Robert Dills to figure out NLP and how to explain NLP back in the day, but what Dills is doing right by now is way better, and I think this one was just an early attempt, but it was it was kind of the confusing thinking of somebody trying to understand NLP. So I would really not recommend that one at all. Uh, it's not even for nerds, it's even worse than nerd nerds. So I would give only 1 out of 10 to this one. Really pass your way on this one. Number 32, The Origins of Neuro-Linguistic Programming by John Grinder and a lot of co-authors. Uh, he has been writing the whole book, but he has been contacting a lot of people who were there back in the day when, they, when this whole stuff started. Very, very entertaining to me. Very entertaining because it was teaching me so much about um, the, early, the early people who were there, uh, how it all started. They had their, 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 their focused groups. Uh, they were testing stuff in, the, in small groups to figure out what, what worked, how they could reproduce what Fritz Perls was doing, uh, what Milton was doing. They would, they would uh, build different small models to teach it to other people and to figure out how can, we, how can we reproduce that stuff and teach it to other people in a way that is simple enough so that they can reproduce it fast. It was teaching, it was giving their whole methodology about this. It was really, really an entertaining book to me. Uh, so I'm going to give the subjective uh, grade of 9 out of 10 for this one because it, re it really helps to understand the roots of what happened and how was Grindr in the beginning, how was Bender in the beginning, how, was, how were the other, the other people uh, related to them. Really a great one to me, uh, so 9 out of 10, even if it doesn't teach that much techniques, but this one is really entertaining, I think, and really uh, helpful to understand what NLP is, because so many people have a different definition of what NLP is, what it is not, um, and so many people have a negative connotation with the term NLP, so this one is closing every every theories of what it is not. It is really giving the, the full map of what it was aimed at doing in the beginning and what was their outcome and what they have been creating. And number 33, The Spirit of NLP by Michael Hall, L. Michael Hall. I am kind of mixed, my opinion is really mixed on this one. I'm mixed between two, two fires, two sides, because I think the introduction of that book is the best ever introduction you can find on NLP. If you can just read the introduction of Spirit of NLP, it is the best ever you can find to understand what NLP is and how are you supposed to be to use it and what it is supposed to be doing. However, the rest of the book, in my opinion, is way too theoretical. 
For me, same thing with uh, as with uh, Rubber Deals. I think Michael Hall has not really been uh, g producing books on NLP. I think he has been producing books on his own field of applied psychology that incorporates a bit of NLP inside it. I think it is much more what he has been doing, at least from my perspective. Very subjective, of course, once again. But from my perspective, it is just his own field of applied psychology and not really NLP in itself. Therefore, this book is filled with so many things that that Michael Hall wanted, I, I guess, to incorporate in his own field of applied psychology, but it is not NLP in itself. So I would not recommend that one uh, for NLP uh, by itself, but the introduction is really awesome. The introduction is great. So I'm mixed because I'm going to give 12 out of 10 for the introduction of this book and only 3 out of 10 for the rest of the book because I don't think it is really relevant. But just my personal opinion, and as a reminder, I have been publishing not really my book, but like my ebook about covert hypnosis and how can you use conversational NLP to persuade people and influence their mind in a positive way, even when they are resisting clients. And you have this document in the description at the first link where I really cover all my find all the best way I can find to explain how covert hypnosis works and how can you use it to influence people's minds unconsciously. And I'm giving 25 different exercises to train yourself to build your skills and to use all that stuff covertly with people every day.